Hello, and welcome to Midtown Houston. Today's program is called the Midtown Houston Brunch and Books, which is our books and literary series that is normally held at Baldwin Park, but we have been doing our programs virtually until we return. So this month, we have selected a book called The Food Truck Handbook, and it's by David Weber, and it's a book about how to start a food truck business. And we know Houston has become a food truck hub, so I thought it would be a good idea to invite some food truck owners to give us their tips and tricks of how to start a business here in Houston and what has their experience been owning a food truck. So I'm excited to introduce our guest today. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. We have Leslie from Puck's Coffee Shop. We have Amir from Alupa and Chill, and we have Julio from Coffee Q. We actually have had your food trucks at our Midtown events, and we just love you guys. And so I'm really, you know, so grateful that you were able to come on today. I was telling our viewers that we've selected this book called The Food Truck Handbook by David Weber. It's sort of just a really good step-by-step -step book on how to start a food truck. And um, I kind of wanted to go over a little bit in the book that I found. There was a, on page two and three of the book, there is a little fun facts. And let's see if you guys know any of this. Um, one of the fun facts was that food trucks or food carts were first identified in New York in as early as the 1690s. Oh, wow. In the 1860s. Oh, didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> in the 1860s, chuck wagons were known to travel and feed the cattle hands that were across the u.s oh wow so sort of an early version of a food truck in the 1870s that's when los angeles started getting really popular for having tamaleros um, which were tamale guys walking around selling tamales and and tacos um, and then that's how they later got called the taco truck in the 1950s, uh, food trucks were mostly known for doing cheap food for construction sites and military bases. So they were kind of looked down upon as something that was just there for the sort of the lower class at that time. Mm -hmm. um, in the 2000s, when the economy kind of changed, apparently, you know, restaurants weren't being developed. So chefs had to come up with another way to reach their customers. And so they came up with doing food trucks and sort of kind of chiming the term gourmet trucks. So that kind of came around in the 2000s. Hmm. Do you guys know any of that information? I mean, no. I can understand. <laughs> um, no, the only the only term I heard was a roach coach. I don't want to eat on a roach coach. <laughs> well, they actually, they do talk about that in the book. And that was kind of in the 50s when they would talk about that. But a lot of that had to do with a lot of the immigration that was coming in and there were so many different variety of like food carts that were going around. So you had, you know, Mexican food or Indian food and the quality of the, I guess what they say, the inspections of things were not as rigorous as they are right now. So yes. roach, right. roach was sort of what, they, and I remember that term, but Me as well. we we're way yeah. far away from that now, thankfully. <laughs> Uh -huh. Good name uh, drop, Leslie. Exactly. Okay, so I kind of want to start with the basics. I want to know what made you decide to start your food truck and what did you have to do to make it happen? I'm going to start with you, Leslie. Um, well, my husband and I met in a restaurant many decades ago. So we had the restaurant industry in our background and we'd always talked about doing a little cafe diner together. He was a chef and manager and baker. So he knew the inside out from running a restaurant and, and I was a waitress, of course. So we just had looked at different options over the years. And one day we were just literally our mechanic, we were picking our car up from the mechanics and I looked behind the building and there was a big green truck that they used uh, to deliver parts in. I walked in, I asked the owner, I said, how much will you sell me that truck for? And we negotiated and we bought the truck and I designed it and did the the design of the interior and the name, came up with the name and that's how we got started. And how, well, I'm going to get back to that and how you got the name and we're going to talk about owning or renting a truck in just a minute. Let me get your story, Amir. How did you decide to do a food truck? 
Um, so of course I have other businesses and it was actually three of us that had gotten together was trying to, you know, talk about doing like a food cart or something. And I was just the one that was went full through with it. Uh, only because we were next door to a taco stand and that's how I came about my specific thing too. Like Leslie, I came up with the design, the name, the concept, everything part of it, uh, which I was really like, wow, I couldn't believe I came up with it. But it was the contour, which the taco stand that was next to my business, you know, it had tacos, uh, burritos, quesadillas, um, nachos and tortas and stuff like that. And so Elote and Chill uh, I wanted to kind of like, you know, contour that. So I came up with the roasted corn and a cup, you know, and then of course the snow cones and uh, we were doing fruit as well, you know, and liquados as what you call it. But um, the name came from uh, just uh, at the time when it was hot was uh, Netflix and chill. It was always like Netflix and chill. So that's just how I came up with it. Elote and chill. It um, stuck. It's been a very um, catchy name. A lot of people have, told me about that and been going with it since then. Good. Julio, how about you? So I've been in um, the coffee business all my life. My family has a uh, coffee land in Guatemala. Uh, so when I came here, I, um, so I, I've, I've been working for Starbucks for almost, I would work for Starbucks for almost 17 years. I, I went to the ranks of district manager. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I always wanted to start my own thing, my own coffee shop. Uh, and the coffee truck was kind of like just a way to, uh, look at concepts and see if they stuck. So I wanted a good food item. So I did something else that I liked, which was barbecue, coffee, Q, coffee and barbecue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and right now we're just growing and, uh, trying to figure out if, if the next step is to open up a brick and mortar. Well, that we'll definitely get to that in a moment. Leslie, let me go back to you really quick. How did you come up with the name Pucks? Um, I d literally was running on my treadmill one day and I was thinking how, what, I wanted something catchy. Um, and I'm just like, well, we would do a pop-up truck, pop-up coffee truck, pop-up coffee shop. I looked at pop-up coffee shop that was taken. So I said, okay, pop-up coffee stop. And, and I knew I wanted um, some kind of mascot in our name and so that's why i have the kitty cat on my shirt that's pucks and there actually is a uh, an orange tabby pucks cat in our family so <laughs> that's he's our mascot and and he's our go is on the logo and um that's just really that, as simple as that but that's what it uh, how it came about it's always interesting to kind of find out how people came up with their name um i want to kind of touch base on what you brought up earlier you said you bought your truck, Leslie, and um, Amir, the same thing. Is that something you recommend? I know that you can either buy, build, or rent a truck. What was your experience and, you know, what has that been like and what do you recommend to others? Um, I'll start with you, Amir. Uh, so that that was really strenuous for me because getting into this you know i was i hadn't done food before and wanted to do about it right and and my first my first searching i was looking from florida to you know uh, san antonio this way i wasn't going much west but i've been looking all around you know searching craigslist uh, ebay uh different manufacturers of of trucks and fabricators and that's what led me to my guy here in houston then i got it uh built with and fabricated brand new and i was going to go to him and maybe buy one um but the price that i was looking at really came out to almost the same so i was just like i'd rather go ahead and make something that i wanted for me and the most important part about that is that i had found somebody local because he was very knowledgeable in what you know, Houston and Harris County wanted as far as inspection and permits. So if he was, I know he was building it, he already knew what he had to build it by, what ramifications and, and uh, you know, rules that they had with the mobile food truck unit uh, inspection site. Julio, what about you? Do you recommend somebody when they want to buy a truck uh, either to buy it or rent one or custom make one? What was, what's your advice usually? So if you're going, I mean, I, I did it the hard way and I learned that buying something that is probably better to build it, mm. get a, get a shell, 
like if you're doing a food truck, get something that's 2000 and up. That way people like if engine issues, anything come up, they're easy to work on. Uh, but as far as everything else, uh, get a shell and build it out. It's better to have it all built out to the specifications of the uh, of the city of what your your of what your plan is and everything. Mm-hmm. Then try to modify something different because that is a pain. In the, like it's a pain. Yeah, very costly. Yeah, and it it, it stops you from uh, events. Uh, I know that we had a few events when we first started that I was booked for certain events and the engine would go out. It's a 1984, mm. so I, oh. I got it because I love the look of it. But it's so hard to work on those engines. It's a lot of overhead. Yep. Yeah. Well, and that, I mean, I'm sure those are the challenges. And that kind of leads me into my next question. I was going to ask each one of you, what has been the biggest challenge for you since starting your food truck business? Leslie, what would you say? Uh, the biggest challenge? Well, you know, we started off. Uh, with a one of those very loud generators, as you guys know, <laughs> that we would roll on the truck and off the truck wherever we went to um, mm-hmm. events or our home base location, um, and that was challenging. So, right from the very beginning, exactly what uh, Julio just said: build out your truck and know what you're doing and dealing with. And when we bought our Honda Super Quiet generators, four of them, that was the best purchase we've ever made that they just hands down totally uh, second can, that yeah we can go yes. anywhere do any job have a quiet generator and they're reliable so just really make sure the mechanics of what you're building um, is going to be suitable for what you need amir how about you what was some of the biggest challenges you faced yeah um i didn't have my my uh my honda uh welded to my before I had other generators and I think that was my <laughs> toughest thing about when I was you know in the middle of uh, an event or somewhere I was at and my generator would start having problems which would take me from the kitchen or from you know doing the, uh, the cash register or anything like that that I need to and I honestly that was the same thing I went that 7000 EU Honda and um, it was just a a quiet uh, you know it was uh, yeah. amazing and that was one of the hardest things uh getting past was that generator it, it, and then of course like uh julio said with um the uh, overhead on like the engine and maintenance to the truck um you know and that's why you know i got a trailer at first but you know get, knowing that every day you got to have that inspected i probably would have went with the truck too just like he said, newer than 2000 and make sure you had it maintenance because it, it takes up for a lot of extra stuff you have to do before you even get into um, the uh, yeah. the truck and even start prepping. But moreover, I would say that having that to where you'd have to lift the, the trailer and put it on the thing on the on the uh, ball hitch, take it to the to the, the commissary to get it clean. It was so strenuous. And I was already dead tired by the time I came and brought it back and set it down. And then I had, then that's when I started the, the work inside the kitchen was prepping, you yeah. know. So um, if I was to move forward, I would definitely be looking at a uh, food truck over a food trailer. That's my personal opinion. I think it'd be the best thing. And I've been giving that uh, advice out. Yeah, I would say, I mean, we've had different uh, variety of trucks out at our events. And I think from my own experience too, that I didn't realize is that, yes, some trucks have very loud generators. And if I'm doing a movie night, for instance, and they're too close, the generator can be too loud for people to hear. So then I'd have to move them way at the end, which, you know, you obviously want a good location for people to be seen, but you don't really know that until the, you know, sometimes when the trucks come up. Okay, that leads me into my next question. and I'll give this one to Julio. In the book, it also talks about some of the challenges include obtaining your licenses, your permits, also learning the regulations here, especially here in Houston. So what advice would you give a new business owner? And what was your experience in getting all your permits and everything you needed to start your truck? Uh, well, the advice that I give is to know where uh, the city where you're doing the business for example, it's way different doing business here than in Pearland or Sugarland or Katy. Everybody has different regulations. 
uh, know where you're doing business, do your research before you even start building or before you start adding or adjusting anything. And, um, and then follow it by the, t- like follow it step by step. Uh, I followed, I did that. I think I, I met somebody that told me that. So I was able to do the same thing, except that I didn't build out my truck. So that was my only challenge. Uh, is it was adjusting the truck after the matter after like having sat down with Larry the guy the guy's name at the city is Larry Goodman here in Houston. Mr. Goodman. Yeah, Mr. Goodman. Good Leslie guy. and Amir, how about you guys? Did you have any trouble getting your permits, or were there any frustrations you had about regulations and things like that that you weren't aware of? Uh, no, just I uh, did what Julio said, but also know exactly where your truck is going to be because people sometimes don't realize that the city of Houston is in this the Harris County mm-hmm. but if you are operating in the city of Houston you have to follow the city of Houston guidelines yep. whereas if you're in the Harris County and not the city they are slightly different, slightly different. So, so you know you yep. just really you really need to know where you're gonna operate your business and right. and then research and go on the, the health department websites on all the different cities counties that you plan to operate and find out what the regulations are that's a good cities. point and they actually talk about that in the book um and in the book they also talk about how to find you know how to pick a location how do you find to pick events um how do those vary um i guess i'll ask you the same question um leslie how did you know where you, you want to have a regular spot to park at? How do you find the events that you attend as well? And I'll ask each one of you the same question. Uh, well, we have a home base is what we call it. Um, it's a, a rundown commercial space that is right not too far from our home is where we thought would be a perfect coffee shop. And it, it kind of for us, it was a perfect storm. We're in a community of 5,000 homes and there is not one coffee shop here in this area literally so that was we thought well let's 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 try it let's try um putting the truck there so we negotiated uh to rent space from the the landowner and that's where we started our home base and for everything else that we've done it's by honestly by word of mouth they've seen the truck driving around or they and they've reached out to us or they've seen it as at a different event that, that you know we've done school events church events sporting events um i mean it, it just we've done everything you could think of that uh they that is outside or inside that uh, people want coffee at coffee and food and so it um it just it lucked out for us is basically we didn't have to go looking for a space we had a space available that um has just and we do so well at our home base that it, it's very difficult for me to leave that uh, space and go and do another event, which is why we started a second truck because we get we kept getting asked to come and do different events. And we're like, well, we know we're gonna make this much money here. And it was hard to leave. So within the first year of opening our first truck, we were planning a second truck. So now we have two trucks. How about you guys, Julio? Um, you know, do you balance it between events? Are they just as important as finding a spot to, yeah. to be at all the time, a home base? Well, um, times have changed. I think that whenever we first started, uh, my plan was to find a place. Uh, but we uh, we lived at Camden Apartments uh, in uh, in Greenway, um, Buffalo Speedway, and my wife works for Camden. And at the moment when we opened, we started setting up shop right in front every morning and just serving the residents on the way out. Right across the street is the office for Levy Park. So I would go in there every morning and like kind of, hey, do you guys want some coffee? You want some tacos? Eventually, within a few weeks, I was the only truck booked at Levy Park for almost two years. And the business was just great. Uh, my plan was to stay there forever, even though Whenever I started, they did tell me that uh, whenever the Tim Love was going to open the, his his area there, as soon as they opened, they weren't going to have any more food trucks. But that kept getting delayed. Six months, six months, six months. Um, I, I, From all the people that started coming to the park, they would call me for catering. So I started doing caterings at nighttime, not during the weekends. Uh, got really busy. I also have a second truck now. 
uh, and I have a small cafe inside of KHOU. So between all these events, I've met people and they just, you know, they start calling you. They like the product, they like the service, and uh, maybe right now two trucks is not enough either. We can't, like, we can't be everywhere. <laughs> I, have, I have six events this weekend. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. And then you just have to juggle them all. Yep. Well, we definitely appreciate it. I'm sure you've had great experiences here at Bagby Park and Baldwin Park. Oh, yeah. We've had you guys out here. We love you guys. And you, the best part of it is, you know, we have coffee. And like you said, you had your barbecue sandwiches. So we had a, we could keep you there all day because we had stuff to offer in the morning. And then by the time it was lunchtime, you guys had stuff to offer for that as well. So we can't wait to have you guys back. Um, you did touch on a point. How did COVID affect your business? I know, Amir, you had some challenges during this time. Um, what can you share about your experience during COVID? And what do you, you know, what changed or how did it change your perception of the business itself? Um, so, uh, you know, with, with, with the pandemic, I did, I did have to shut down uh, my, uh, my, my lady, my food manager who had her license, uh, she got sick. And so we had shut down. And at the same time was when I needed to reinspect and all my businesses had just gone down at that time. So I had to shut it down for now. Um, but um, it was just, you know, in the neighborhood where my, my business is, it's just, you know, COVID had ran rampant and thank goodness I never got it or any of my family or even my employees, uh, you know, but um, that was, that was a little difficult because you know i had to make this decision to shut it down for the time being uh you know because there was other places that were calling me but i, I had lost my employee and then i, I just didn't have the time to uh, reinspect too which is you know it's a, it's a timely process that you have to go through uh, with getting all the permits and stuff like that to be ready for the city to inspect uh but um there has been a lot of potential but like like Julio said there, it's, it's tough to be in two places at once, you know, and, and when I started my business too, I started out with many partners to come in with me, but ended up spearheading it just by myself. And that was one of the first things that when I had met Julio was that he's like, man, you can't do this by yourself. Yeah, you can't. It's just too hard. You know, you got somebody doing the, the books, you know, running the kitchen, doing the maintenance doing the cleaning you at least need to have two of you need to have a partner in this and if not employees to to get the uh necessary uh duties uh, uh daily duties done for something like that and i was i was doing it all myself i was breaking my back doing it cleaning setting it up doing the paperwork it's and hard. managing yes and managing my employee too to make sure that you know i could be away while she was running the truck and um it just came to that now and now too i have you know what, it, what what's been so crazy too is that the industry has picked up amazingly um uh you know just because of the pandemic and you know sad to say something like that but it has picked up and you know and now having this business i i have the option of you know reopening it for myself putting in a chef in in, in charge renting it out uh, to somebody or even selling it. Thank you, Amir. Yes, that's very helpful information on that. Um, I do want to ask you guys, I know this book, and again, we're talking about some tips and tricks from the food truck handbook um, and talking to local food truck owners here on their experiences. And one of the pages in the book does give you a breakdown from administrative, food and beverage, commissary, HR, what equipment you need. So this book is actually really, really helpful. Um, so, and we're going to be doing some giveaways of this book when you share or you tag a friend in the comments of this program. I do want to ask you guys really quickly, we've talked about the challenges, but what has been the best part of owning your business? And I'll go to Leslie. What's been the best part of owning your own food truck? Uh, the, probably meeting all the amazing people we've met over the years and having a home-based location has allowed us to really become a part of fam the people's family, you know, with the, the birth of children, uh, people moving away and then coming back to see us when they come back to town. Um, it's just, it, you know, it's just, we feel like we're a community and, and we're a coffee shop, even though we're just a food truck. And, um, you know, your regulars that you know by name and you know where they work and you know their family members. Um, it's just, it's the community feel that we've been able to create without 
having a brick and mortar, which is um, we have found to be very rewarding for us. Julio, how about you? What is the best part of owning your business? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to go with Leslie here. <laughs> I uh, being being a coffee guy all my life, I love the sense of community. So, uh, but unlike Leslie, I'm all over the city. And, uh, but I do have my regular spots all over the city. And um, like NASA, I mean, we go to KHOU, KPRC. We, I mean, we've met so many, so many people. And then just building relationships, networking. Uh, we've been able to find people like jobs, connecting people to each other. Like, I mean, that's, that's probably the best thing I'm doing in my business is the, the meeting people and the networking. Well, that is really good. Okay, guys. Well, I really appreciate everybody's advice. Um, I do kind of want to just have one last question for you guys. And that is, you know, how can people stay connected to you? I know, you know, some of us are going through challenges and you guys are, you know, moving locations and at different events. How can your customers still, you know, stay connected to you? How do they find you? Um, and how do you, what works best for you? Is it Instagram? Is it, you know, another method of social media? What has worked for you? Go ahead, Leslie. We're on Facebook and Instagram um, because that's, there, there are, is a segment of this generate population as myself <laughs> that does better on Facebook than I do Instagram. But I, I have a social media director who is younger and she posts, does all our posts for us. And that's important. We update our schedules weekly there and, and specials that we are having. So that's the best way to follow us. Pucks Coffee, Pucks Coffee, Facebook, Pucks Coffee, Instagram. And we also have our website, Pucks Coffee. Awesome. And how about you, Amir? Now yes. That um, um, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, no, no, I was going to say, and I know that your business is not open at the time, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I'm sure I still see, you know, you stay connected with your customers. Yes. Um, so how is do. that working for you? Uh, you know, and we still get a lot of calls too. And, you know, I put uh, out there too, temporarily closed. Uh, but um, Google as well. Uh, Google, but on my main, like Leslie said, is Facebook is where I get most of my uh you know, hits or, or clients hitting me up or asking me. And, and then of course my secondary is, um, uh, Instagram and that's honestly getting the, the younger crowd with Instagram and Facebook is a little bit of more or older crowd and, and people that are really trying to search out for Elote, you know, and they'll search out through Google and then, um, as well uh, try to uh, but but let me say too through DoorDash and Yelp as well you know there's just other different social media sites that people have you know um, you can find as well you know DoorDash is one that okay we don't they'll advertise us or whatnot but you know it's it's for the the client or you know uh, anybody's going there to find uh, something on DoorDash we have it there or you know, Yelp, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Anybody getting into the TikToks? <laughs> I just recently did. <laughs> just recently. Yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, I know that's the next big thing. Everybody's been using the TikToks. It is. So maybe crazy. that's something to look. We'll see you on TikTok, Julio, I'm sure pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Julio, how do your customers stay in touch with you? Uh, so your same thing, Instagram, Facebook, uh, I have a business application on the phone that links them both together. So usually I get both messages in the, on the same business uh, application. Uh, I, I try to use every every avenue that's available because people use so many different things. I get them on uh, my email. I get uh, Wix, which is our uh, website, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, word of mouth. is. I mean, whenever people start seeing you, they start calling you directly. So uh, it's info at coffeeq.com or at coffeeq truck is my Instagram. Okay, final question for you guys. And that is, you know, I'm sure you meet people all the time, people who are watching this program that are considering starting a food truck. What is the, you know, that one bit of advice that you would give to somebody who's thinking about doing it right now and just not sure? Okay, I'll go to Leslie. Find something you're passionate about. It's uh, you're going to be working 
working, working, working. And so you need to uh, do something that you love doing and want to continue doing and share with people. And that, that that's the best advice I can give people because when you think you've uh, completed everything, there's always something else to do. When we started our trucks, it took us one year, a whole year before we were able to open up because of all the things that we needed to do. But we just kept plugging away and, and we finally did it. So make sure that's part of the plan. Yes, congrats. Thank you. Amir, how about you? Uh, a question again, please. I'm what sorry. is your one bit of advice for somebody who's thinking about starting a food truck right now and that's you're, they're at home doing their research, but they're a little nervous about it. What advice do you give them? Definitely, like uh, I'll jump off what Leslie said is that do something you enjoy uh, or it's something you're passionate about and straight. Uh, my second would be go straight to the source of permits and inspection, you know, whatever county or city that you're in. Like here is Mr. Goodman, Mr. Larry Goodman, and everybody knows him. And he's the one that runs uh, basically Houston and you know they have a they have a pre-inspection list or something like that but something that i also was was talking with them with the city about is having um uh inspection list for re-inspecting uh because a lot of the times you go there and maybe something new came on and you're not aware of it you have to be real uh communicative with the people down at the mobile food inspection spot but also just stay in touch with them just make sure that there's nothing new because they're not putting it out, but you got to, you know, to know, you know, so you don't get, um, you know, what do you, you don't get the inspection because you didn't have one thing. It's always best to give a call uh, there or go down there and speak with them, get a, write a list of the things that they don't have in their pre-inspection list to just make sure. So you're not going back and forth or paying that fine for uh, not passing the inspection. Thank you. Julio, how about you? What's your bit of advice? Uh, be ready to work really hard. Uh, success comes with times uh, with time and sweat. And uh, it's not going to be a success story in a year or two. Uh, I think that you got to be ready to have some um, just be ready for different challenges because you, you got to be able to there's going to be things that pop up that you you've never dealt with, but you just got to be ready to uh, deal with those situations and move forward. And that's how you're going to be able to succeed. Thank you very much. OK, well, I really appreciate all of you coming on today. This was really helpful information. Um, and for you guys watching, the food truck handbook is um, a book that teaches you how to start a food truck. And if this program was helpful to you, we want you to share this program or comment. Let us know what you learned today. Uh, you know, tag a friend in the comments for a chance to win a copy of this book. Um, so we're going to be giving away some of these books. If you're looking to start a food truck, then this is the book for you. It's been so helpful, I think, for a lot of people. There's pages in here about how to break down everything from expenses to regulations, um, key just step by step. Um, tips that were in here and all the information that everybody gave today was so helpful. So I want to thank you guys again, Leslie from Puck's Coffee, Julio from Coffee Q and Amir from Alutha and Chill. We can't wait to have you guys back at our events here in Midtown Houston. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for watching today. Thank, thank you, you, Amra. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you, Bye. Bye.